Neil, what's this asshole doing in my shot? I'm sure the gentleman didn't mean to, Pam. Isn't that right, mister? Hey guys, Anton the Tech Chap, and this is the ROG Zephyrus Duo 15 SE, probably the most ridiculously over-the-top laptop you can buy right now. RTX 3080, 8-core Ryzen 9, and dual 4K screens. In fact, this main panel is actually 4K 120. Don't tell my wife this, but um, I think I'm in love. Now, you may have already seen this. In fact, I did a hands-on with an engineering sample back in January, uh, but the lovely people over at ASUS and NVIDIA got in touch and asked if they could sponsor a video where I switched to this as my main laptop and see what I think. As always, even though it's sponsored, all my opinions are my own, that's the most important thing. And it gave me the opportunity to use this for more than a few days or maybe a week or so, which I normally get before they grab the review sample right back off me. So um, it's been really interesting actually. And the big question for me was whether this ScreenPad Plus was actually useful or just a bit of a gimmick. And also what it was like to use a 4K 120 screen. The funny thing is though, that despite the fact that having an AMD CPU, a Ryzen 5000, and the latest NVIDIA GPU is such a good combination right now, these stickers couldn't be any further apart. So how much? Well, for this top spec, we're looking at about three and a half thousand pounds. Although it does start from about two grand, which gets you the RTX 3060 and the same 4K 120 screen. But the fact is there's really nothing else out there like this, except maybe, here's one I made earlier, Asus's own ZenBook Duo range. This is the uh, ZenBook 14, which I reviewed a few weeks ago. And it really does feel like the smaller little brother to the Zephyrus SE. This is obviously a lot sleeker, more portable, a little bit lighter, less powerful. This is next level. And obviously being an ROG device, uh, it's more gaming oriented. But for me, this has actually turned into not only a proper gaming desktop replacement, but also a workstation. This is kind of like the ultimate laptop where you can edit your videos or do your 3D rendering in a day, and then come five o'clock, you can switch over to a bit of Warzone. And while it doesn't look that much different to last year's model on the outside, on the inside, it's a big step up. We've gone from a 2080 Super Max Q to a 3080 and also Ryzen 5000 series processors. So we're looking at around 45% faster CPU and GPU performance. Okay, so first things first, is this ScreenPad Plus useful or just a gimmick? Well, it turns out in the last few weeks I've been using this, there's three ways I actually do use it in real life. Firstly, Discord. Whenever I'm gaming on this, I have Discord open on the second screen. Yes, it's kind of sad that my only two active groups right now are for Call of Duty and Age of Empires 2, but it's really handy to have up because if someone's streaming in the Discord chat that I'm in and say I'm playing Warzone, I can get a bit of a tactical advantage, AKA not quite, but feels like cheating by watching their stream while I'm playing. And as well as Discord, I might have a Twitch stream up here. So whether you're watching or even streaming yourself, that's pretty useful. And to be honest, gaming while in lockdown can get a little bit lonely sometimes. So having a stream on as I play just makes it feel a bit more sociable. Secondly, because we're getting a good quality 4K screen, we're talking about 100% Adobe RGB and Pantone validated, coupled with the pretty serious horsepower that we have inside here, I can comfortably edit my 4K videos on this. I still use proxies because Premiere Pro is a system hog, and actually I'm shooting this at 10-bit 4K on my Sony a7S III, but having the screen pad down here for my project files is just insanely helpful. And going back to a regular laptop, unless you have an external screen, just feels so cramped otherwise. And I think that's kind of the beauty of this, that it's not just some RGB gone mad, ridiculous gaming laptop. It's also a proper workstation with that performance that we're getting. You can of course also switch between NVIDIA's Game Ready or Studio Drivers, uh, which have been tested with a much wider range of creative programs, but you still get all those game updates as part of it. So whether you are using this purely for gaming or for a bit of work and CAD and engineering and design uh, apps as well, it's kind of like a really good all-in-one. And actually, on both the ZenBook Duos and this ROG Zephyrus, ASUS have added some fancy control panels which make use of the screen pad. So if you load up Photoshop or Premiere Pro, it is mainly just the Adobe Suite right now, but you can fully customize it. And this is actually one of those things that having an extended amount of time with this, I've realized 
isn't really for me. Uh, I do like the idea of it. It's a cool concept. And for some of you guys, you may love it, depending on what program you're using. But I prefer having my media browser down here instead. I'm pretty quick with my keyboard shortcuts and my mouse. But however you use it, it just gives you more flexibility. And I said the same thing in my Zimbook Duo video, but I bet you already have in your mind exactly how you would use this dual screen setup. In fact, let me know what it would be in the comments below. Rocket launcher with their name on it. <laughs> but the ScreenPad Plus software on here is a lot better than on the first gen models. It's a lot less buggy, and one of my favorite features is uh, creating task groups. Uh, so, what you can do is set up your screen exactly how you'd like, and then in the ScreenPad menu, you can capture it, which basically takes a screenshot of the layout and saves it. So, then with a single press, you can then go back to your ideal setup every time. So obviously the big wow look at me feature is the ScreenPad Plus. But actually this is also the first laptop I've ever used with a full 4K 120 screen. It is still an IPS LCD, it's matte, as is the screen pad, which is quite nice because it means there isn't like a glaring difference, unlike say on the Zenbook Pro Duo 15 OLED, where you have a glossy OLED up here and then just a matte LCD down here. These are pretty similar looking. But it's that combination of 4K and 120 that makes everything from using the desktop, browsing the web, editing in Premiere Pro, incredibly smooth and sharp. And considering there's barely a handful of proper 4K 120 monitors on the market right now, I guess it goes some way to make the price of this seem a little bit more reasonable. However, my first thought with a 4K 120 screen on a gaming laptop is there's no way even with a laptop 3080 that you're gonna get that kind of FPS to max this out. And it turns out that's true for the most part, but it depends on the game. Maxed out at 4K, Rainbow Six Siege averaged 124 FPS, Overwatch 103, Crisis Remastered and Cyberpunk, as you would expect, were a lot more demanding though. But dropping to Quad HD makes a big difference. So I've settled on full fat 4K when I'm video editing or uh, working or just using the desktop. But then in demanding games, I'll just drop it down to Quad HD and get a much higher frame rate. So that way I'm kind of getting the best of both worlds. I'll tell you what makes all the difference though, DLSS. I've made a bunch of videos on NVIDIA's fancy deep learning super sampling tech, but in my mind, it is probably the biggest single advancement in PC gaming we've seen in the last five years or so, and it's only getting better. The impact it has does vary between games. Cyberpunk is a good example. I mean, with ultra settings without any RT, I get 25 FPS with this. With ray tracing enabled, a barely playable 14 at 4K, but turning DLSS on to balanced, on average, doubles my frame rate. Fortnite also massively benefits from DLSS, 63 up to 92 at 4K, and up to a huge 142 FPS at Quad HD. Now having the top spec RTX 3018 here goes a long way to help, of course, although this is actually using a more middle of the road 115 watt TGP variant of the 3080, but it's not just about raw horsepower because the NVIDIA 3000 series GPUs we get in here will give you the best performance when it comes to ray tracing and DLSS, plus we get extras like NVIDIA's new Reflex low latency mode, which in games like Warzone and Fortnite can help reduce latency, hopefully giving you a bit of an edge. I mean, I'll take any help I can get. Now jumping into the Armory Crate software, and most of the time when I'm gaming or even editing, I stick this in turbo mode, which gives me the best performance, but it does make the fans whir up quite a bit. Now design-wise, it is a little bit chonky, I think is maybe the word. Uh, we have this protruding matte bezel, which is nice and thin on three sides, but then we get this big chin at the bottom. And apart from maybe the lid and this all black color, it looks pretty much the same as last year's Zephyrus Duo, but either way, open or close, this thing will turn heads. And while it is a pretty hefty laptop, I mean, it's 5.3 pounds, which I think is 2.4 kilograms, I think given the form factor and everything you're getting, it's still pretty portable. Although you'll probably need to carry this fairly hefty 280 watt power brick. Uh, although actually, if you go for the 3060 or 70 options, you get a smaller 200 watt adapter. As for battery life, well, it is a little bit better than before, although no surprise, it won't really get you through a full day. I found I get about four hours of light use from this, non-gaming, or about five hours if I actually turn off the screen pad. The keyboard and touchpad also haven't really changed. I still like to plug in a Bluetooth mouse to avoid the cramped touchpad, but the keyboard itself is quite nice to use. So then, after using this for the past few weeks, what do I think? Would I recommend it? Well, 
It is very expensive and probably a bit overkill, especially if you're just going to whip this out in a Starbucks. And I don't think this 4K screen is ideal for pro or esports gamers. But for someone like me who edits 4K video uh, and also plays some games on the side, it's the ideal combination. The ScreenPad Plus for extra screen space and that flexibility, the color accurate and fast, it's just three millisecond response time, 4K 120 screen, and also the sheer performance we get out of this, particularly the top spec one. If I had a few quid to spare, I would definitely invest in one and I would recommend it, but it is gonna be quite a niche audience. Someone who wants a super high-end gaming laptop but isn't a pro competitive gamer, or maybe someone who wants uh, to use this for work and for play and has a spare two or three or three and a half thousand pounds burning a hole in their pocket. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to buy something like this? And also what would be your ideal dual screen setup? Let me know in the comments below. And I'll leave links for this in the description for Overclockers, Scan and Amazon. I think they're getting new stock in soon. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more from me. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Jam.